practice of Tantra is grounded in a very, very, very profound philosophy. And fortunately, many of those philosophical texts are now published. The books, Tantric texts belonging to Kashmir Shaivism, such as Swachanda Tantra, Netra Tantra, Tantra Loka, and many other texts of Shakti Sadhana related schools of Tantra, such as Saundra Lahari, Sharada Tilakam, Srividyarnama. When you read these books, my God, this is a very, very, very heavy duty philosophy and one of the finest metaphysical tradition. Then you also hear many other books that talk about Tantra, which gives an impression that Tantra is yoga of sex, black magic, voodoo. Then by the time you read about Tantra from different angles, that is from philosophy, from the standpoint of philosophy, metaphysics and many, many other popular uh, images of Tantra that you see in so many other different places. Then you, real, then you start wondering, ultimately, what is Tantra? And what is, this, what is Tantra trying to teach us, give us? What can we learn from Tantra? It is in this regard I said, I'll share with you what I have gathered both from my academic studies as well as from the interaction with the masters. Tantra is a science, a spiritual tradition grounded in practice which tells us that all of us have the power and privilege to blossom, to experience our fullness, to experience the joy and beauty that is in us, to experience the joy and beauty that is us. I'll give you an example. See here, this is a flower. It is in, in its fully blossomed state and this is the stem of the flower. But before this flower blossomed, you know it was in this particular form. There is another version of the same Amaryllis. Amaryllis? Amaryllis. Okay. So see here, you do not see the flower but you can see the bud you can see the stem. But what is not so easily seen is this tuber, this bulb that you are seeing and it is from here this stem emerged and very soon it will turn into flower. Do you have any idea that what causes this flower to sprout? shoot its stem in the air and one day blossom and unveil this beautiful color, beautiful aroma, wonderful nectar and then the question is even more serious that why does it flower? What is it trying to accomplish? And another layer of question could be that why does it begin to sprout and blossom just in a particular season, at a particular time in the year. What kind of, why, why, it's, why it requires certain circumstances, certain atmosphere for its blossoming? And how does this flower know that it is time to blossom when the flower is sitting somewhere in a dark place in the form of a tuber, a bulb. This is what Tantra is telling. 
Tantra is talking about how this blossoming takes place and how our inherent power, beauty and joy at some point blossoms. And what prevents that blossoming? And what happens to us when our inherent urge to experience our own blossoming does not materialize? It is in this context Tantra defines what is pain and what is pleasure, what is misery and what is joy, what is success and what is failure, what is construction, what is destruction. It is in this context Tantra tells us what is fulfillment and what is lack of it. What is freedom and what is bondage? Tantra tells us that this manifest form of ourselves, which consists of us having a body, senses, sense organs, mind, breath, all kinds of positive and negative thoughts, feelings, sentiments, it emerges, it manifests from an unseen, imperceptible divine essence. Our essence is divine, eternal, immortal, full of joy, full of beauty, saundarya lahari, ananda lahari. We are just wave of beauty, wave of joy. Tantra is a science, spiritual science that tells us, that explains the dynamics of that divinity, Shakti, the power. As I was showing you that flower and tuber, that inherent force that is in the tuber has its own inherent urge to become manifest. Thank you.